Hi, it's Paul Bain. This is GreatDad.com, and I am excited to talk to Todd Christensen today. Todd is a education manager at MoneyFit, and he is a specialist on uh, debt reduction, but also on all things financial, financial planning and money management. He has a site called 50 Plus on Fire, which maybe he can talk, talk to us a little bit about, but what we're really going to talk about today is, is, is money education for kids. So welcome, Todd. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. So before we get into the, the the kid part, I do I am really interested in the fifty plus on fire because I am a little bit over fifty, and uh, I think it's going to lead kind of into our discussion about about kids because it's kind of a website for what you do if you didn't have Todd when you know to help you with your kids what uh, you know how how they missed out on the opportunities uh, or what what they do to. to to make up for missed opportunities. Right, right. Yeah, I started about a year ago because for those of us who are uh, 50 or, or older, it's all about financial independence and still kind of dreaming about uh, that retire, retiring earlier than 55 or, or 67. <laughs> and how do you get there? Uh, hopefully ideas uh, that will be uh, really applicable to the kids too. You can teach them a lot about starting a business, running a business, and uh, just giving them a little, a little hope to have a, a financial independence of their own. Yep. And, you, and you've written a book in concert with that website, the, off, the, the Everyday Money for Everyday People. Is that- I did, yeah. Hand? It's 50 plus on fire. I uh, wrote that uh, uh, over the last about f- six months and got it published earlier this, uh, this year. And it's a kind of compilation of what I write about on the blog, plus a few extra tidbits here and there. Mm-hmm. But you've been working also with uh, on your um, description. I, I read that you were you you work with kids as young as uh, second grade, right? All the way down to kindergarten, even kindergarten. Yeah, and yeah. Really it's, saving it, the pennies. It's a lot of fun through through MoneyFit where I work. Being able to go into a lot of second grade classes uh, is primarily over the last few years. But uh, yeah, from kindergarten all the way through high school and even in colleges. Uh, and to teach about how to manage money, the day-to-day sort of thing, earn, uh, give, spend, and save. The four things I teach second graders. Those are the four things you can do with money. Really, there's nothing else unless you want to throw it away, but that's kind of giving to somebody indirectly. <laughs> You're right, right. Well, I'm really interested in this topic. I, my kids are 17 and 21. You've got four mm-hmm. kids of your own, two out of right. Out of the house and two still in the house, so you're still in the in the thick of it in teaching right. them, uh, you know, that those uh, the, the 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 extra milk they throw away because it's not good enough, or the the couple t- the little bits of cereal at the bottom of the box they just toss it out. They they're not yet, uh, you know, even my even my you know my seventeen and twenty one year old they're not totally uh, they haven't incentivized the fact that somebody had to go out and work for that money to buy that right. stuff and. Once you do start working, you kind of treat a lot of the little little things around the house in a little diff- different way. How right. do you how do you sensitize kids as as young as you know kindergarten? Oh, about there's, that? Yeah, there's there's a lot of, of ways you can do that uh, from just the words that we use and the actions that that they see. Kids from the from the time they're a year to two years old, they already know that there is an exchange going on at the cashier. So. People ask, is too young, five years old, too young to teach them about money? They already know that there's an right. exchange of somehow something going on. And if if we never talk to them about it, they just think, oh, we're just swipe a card. That's all we have to do. They don't know that there's money behind that. And or kids think, oh, it, it, the money comes from the bank and the bank gives us all this money it, <laughs> or the government makes the money. So it's just having conversations naturally as they go. But even things like, hey, mom, dad, Dad, specifically for this great uh, podcast, can I have some money for the vending machine? And instead of just saying, no, I don't have the money for that, which generates this idea of uh, the scarcity in yeah. the kid and, 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 and kind of fear that, oh, dad doesn't have enough money for a vending machine. Mm. It's instead of just, well, you know, that's not a priority for us right now. Or did you know that if you, that same dollar, if we went back to the cashier, you, uh, ca- uh, checkout stand, you can get two of those for the same amount. Just simple things like that. Little, yeah, little tiny, little, yeah. at, 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 a, at a young age, rather than just giving it to them whenever they want, obviously, that's that's the job of the grandparents. But for <laughs> us, uh, <laughs> yeah. we're still a little bit in charge. Yeah, and I think one of the, the most helpful words in the English language for raising financially smart kids is a two-letter word, no. Yeah, well, that, that goes for a lot of things. Right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it takes a lot of it's discipline. It's so hard, right? Yeah. But uh, 
whether you give them an allowance and and a lot of people don't like the idea. I want to talk about that. Yeah, let's get into that. Yeah, because it's it's uh, it, it, they don't want to give it away. It's just it it seems unfair that the child shouldn't have to work for the money. But others will will say it's just part of being in the family. Plus, if if you're not going to give them money when they're young, when are they going to learn how to how to use it? And when are they going to learn from the mistakes? Because Paul, I, would, I I don't know about you, but I learned from my financial lessons from the mistakes I've made. Yeah. And so if the, the younger we can learn from those mistakes, the, le- the smaller amounts of money we can learn from. Yeah. So if they're, they're learning that, you know, if I spend all my money on the candy bar every week for three weeks or four weeks and, and not on that bigger toy or the bigger item that I want to buy after two months that I could have bought if I hadn't been spending it, they've only wasted, a, you know, four or five or ten dollars rather than wait until they go out. The, the worst time to t- talk about money is when they're heading out the door on the way to college. They're not listening right now anyway. Oh, yeah. It's th- th- now it's too late because now we're talking about hundreds or thousands of dollars that they can make mistakes with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that th- there are ramifications down the road. If your kids leave for college thinking that there's a, there's a money tree in the backyard and right. that's it, that you've right. been digging up all the time. Cause the, the, the uh, scale, of the, the candy bars get a little bit, uh, yes. a little bit larger. <laughs> Absolutely. So, the, the allowance thing, I always, I've always been just really intrigued with this because they say that there are very there are two uh, philosophies about allowances that kind of t- uh, tied your political your political um, thinking. Because one says we're in a commune together and we share mm-hmm. and we and we give you an allowance uh, and it, you don't have to work for it. It's just part of being in our group. Right. And then the other part says, well, we don't give you an allowance. Everything is uh, everything is a chore. So everything, if you want to wash the car, you get $5, you want to do this, you want to take out the garbage or whatever. And they said those, both those um, approaches, good or bad, I don't know. I don't think there's any, anybody decide what, whether they're good or bad, but they send different lessons, right? They absolutely do. Yeah. They do. Uh, if, if you're going to look at the two extremes, yeah, the one says you get, uh, you don't have to do anything for it. It's right. just yours and no accountability. Right. Uh, the other is every action that you perform has a value, a financial value. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it, and at some point the child might say, I don't want to do that. It's not yeah. worth it to me, but you know, and yourself is a lesson though, right? Yeah, absolutely. Five bucks for a car wash. No dad no, <laughs> going no, right. 20. You know? <laughs> right. There's a minimum wage. Come on. Um, the, but there, there's a happy medium. I think most people would agree in there somewhere. Thank I, you for clarifying that. Yeah. Because I, and I think you know. I think the, the idea of giving a, some sort of an allowance, even if it's just a, a couple of bucks a month um, for young young children, but then saying, hey, look, if you want to supplement that, that's not a word that they're going to know. But if you want to make that even more, you can do these extra chores. You have to do some chores anyway, yeah. right? You're going to have to clean your room. You're going to have to help in the yard. You're going to have to do this. That's just part of being a family too. If yep. you want some money as part of being in the family, you also have to the work. Yep. But if you want some extra, let's help them develop that entrepreneurial spirit of, all right, I, I'm going to get out and do some extra work. Yeah. Yeah. There are, that's that's really an important lesson. The idea of the, yep. of the, the, I think the combination of those two are really a powerful thing. And then you're not always stuck in that uh, that very difficult position of saying no to the, you know, everyone, yeah. candy bars. It's, there's nothing like the kid looking at his wallet and staring and saying, you know, we quite often did this when we'd go on a holiday, we'd give them, you know, whatever the age was like $10. And that's your, right. that's kind of for your, like to buy little trinkets along the way, rather than asking me every time, start to judge, you know, you want this thing right now, or you want to hold off for, you know, something a little later. Yeah. We just got back from a big, big vacation to one of the big theme parks and our 14 and 15 year old, they had a certain amount of money that they had earned themselves. Plus we had some that we had offered as well. And one of the keys that we, we found was really helpful is uh, first day in the park, of course, they wanted to spend all their money all at once. <laughs> and we had to say, look, we're going to be back in this park in three days or four days. Uh, why don't you wait? Because we're going to do with other, a lot of other things. And lo and behold, after four days, they don't even remember what they wanted to buy that first day. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about, about as your kids get a little older, 14, 15, I mean, maybe even a little bit younger than that, is, is, is forcing your kids to get a job, like saying, no, this summer you have to get a job. How do you, how, what is your feeling about that? Uh, I, I think a, I <laughs> I think some extra work is great for kids. Yeah. Uh, the, the word force, that's, that's where yeah, there's yeah. going to be a lot of debate. Uh, everyone, every child's going to be different, of course. 
um, depending on their level of maturity and their own skills. I think it's a great idea to support them in anything. I, I, I heard, um, I was reading somebody's idea the other day about, you know, the idea of a lemonade stand, which most parents have tried, right? <laughs> and and I I should have, I wish I had read this earlier because I saw the lemonade stand as as a lose, lose. It was just, you're, it, you're not going to make money. No, cost of goods, um, too high. It's too cold or this, that. There's not enough people on our street. But the idea that, hey, they're, you're supporting them. You're buying the lemonades and you're encouraging them to try something new and to, oh, it's okay to fail, especially early on that they're going to learn. You know what? I failed. I survived. Yep. Get up back on my feet. Just try something else. Yeah. You don't have to introduce the idea of a PL until uh, right. a few years later. <laughs> right. But there's a lot of a lot of activities besides besides the jobs. There's a lot of games and books and activities that you can you can take your kids through from the time, about the time that they're eight, and develop that little more rash, a uh, little more ability to 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 reason, um, to help them develop some some really good foundational financial skills. Yeah, yeah. Not every not every kid is going to be an entrepreneur, but learning those money skills as as they you know get a little bit older and they start thinking about college and financial aid right. and off, it's it's really really important um do you have any tips for about uh about when is the earliest they can get start getting credit and, and start working on getting a credit score yeah there's there's another debatable question uh, i've heard a lot of parents say you've got to build your credit while you're still in the home or, or as soon as you go out to college this is my opinion, this, and I base that opinion upon almost two decades of financial education and counseling. But most teens and most young adults are not ready for credit. I've got actually some steps to go through. If, if you want to know if your child's ready for credit, uh, and a young adult, and, and, and the reason I say that there most aren't is because uh, the studies show that kids who show up at campus with a credit card will max it out 60% of the time. Mm. They're just not ready, and they'll end up with more credit and bad credit, which is is really it's harder That's to worse, get yeah. rid of. You can't get rid of credit; it follows you for seven years. It's easier to start from scratch when, as they get about the time they graduate. But um, four things: Do they have income? If they don't have income, don't give them credit. Put them as an authorized user on your own credit card. Mm. That actually can help build their credit. They don't even have to see it or know. Oh, really? That with, yeah, know that. we did that with our older kids. Um, we got put them on our on one of our credit cards, and uh, the cards came. Uh, I think we shredded them at one point. They never even knew they had it. By the time they were 18, 19, one of them went to get a, a car loan, had a, car, a credit score in the 700s already. Uh, but they don't have to know it, know about it, use it. It's just authorized user. Uh, but do they have uh, income? If they don't have income, they're probably not ready for their own credit card. Uh, are they? Uh, and that's regular income. It doesn't matter if it's part-time, full-time, uh, regular income. Are they, uh, do they have a budget? Are they living within their means? Mm -hmm. Do they have a debit card that they have used for at least 12 months without 12 months? And this seems amazing for a lot of adults, but have they used a debit card for 12 months without a decline? Because if they can't do that with a debit card, yeah, right. guaranteed they're going to max out their credit card and beyond and it's really going to be, be, be painful. Uh, so those are, those are kind of the, the main three steps to start with uh, to understand that. I would actually throw in a fourth step uh, a lot of times too is, do they have a, a, an emergency fund of savings? Because if they're not building savings first and they're, they're thinking about the spending with the credit, that's, that's an imbalance. That's not really a, a good way to start their, their financial adult life. That is really valuable information. I did not know that about uh, being able to develop credit on on your own, and and the thought that uh, because I I think we just we got our daughter on a credit card, and the idea that having her, I, my thought was like let her learn on her own bad mistakes. But if you're saying that really you do not want them to learn the hard way, like you know start paying interest charges and finance charges because that's yeah. going to send the wrong signal to the credit bureau. If there's, if there's another way they can learn that, and that's just really, those are the four things. If they can learn to earn income, manage their money, manage their, their expenses with the debit card and save, um, they'll be a lot better with the credit card because if they, when they do mess up with the credit card, eight, 21 years old, I maxed out my first credit card to the tune of $2,000 in less than 36 hours. <laughs> so I speak from experience. 
seven years, it's going to follow that negative information will follow you. And that's seven years in that seven year period, you're probably going to want to get a, a car and I'm not a big yeah. fan of car loans, but you might even yeah. buy a home yeah. uh, in that period. And you're going to want good credit and not that bad stuff following you around. Yeah. Why do you think it is so difficult for kids to, to hold on to that car? I, I guess it's difficult for adults too, but the, the card versus cash, it just yeah. it, uh, doesn't, the yeah. brain doesn't process it in the same way. No, you're right. It's, it's not just credit cards, any kind of plastic that all, if all you have to do is swipe or insert, you don't count how much money you're spending. And uh, the, there's, there's studies out there that show that you, we overspend a minimum of about 12, 13% on all purchases. But if you go into a, like a, a, a restaurant, it's gonna be 30 to 50 to 100% more if you use plastic than if you are taking in yeah. $10 uh, in cash. We, if we don't count it, we have no idea. We just, we don't even think about it. And, and, and I don't know, Paul, if you wanna stand outside a, a grocery store and ask to a survey, but I, I can guarantee about 95% of people who use deb, uh, debit card or, or, or credit card have no idea how much they just spent. Yeah, yeah, no. The cashier I, will say it right. and it'll come up on the little thing, but uh, yeah. like, they'd, yeah. they'd be lucky to get within 10 or $15. Yeah, I, I worked at Visa uh, for four years yeah. and, and yeah. that's how, how they make their money. Yep. Yeah. 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 And nothing against it. I mean, Visa, yeah. I mean, all it's the protections convenient. come with a credit card. There are some great reasons to have a credit card. Track your spending. But building your credit for credit's sake is not a good reason. Good, good, good advice. How about, um, how about investing with kids? Do you have any, do you have any experience with that and teaching them how to, whether that's, um, value? that's, that's getting a little beyond my, my expertise, except that I've heard a lot of great ideas and we, we've tried this um, to teach kids about investing, have a family 401k. I don't know if you've heard that oh, no, where, uh, where you, you know, if they're earning money or whether you're giving them um, an allowance and you're, you're helping them, you know, split that money into four, into the give, save for right. short terms, invest for long terms, whether it's college or beyond and, and spend. But when they have enough money where they can start investing, um, match whatever they invest. In fact, you could do that with your, with their savings. Look, we'll, we'll match anything you put and leave in savings uh, for six months or, or a year or something like that. Yeah. I do, I do that with, with my son. It, it, uh, yeah. The concept is a little bit odd at first because like, no, I want that money. And like, right. Well, it's still your money, but I'm matching it. I think I matched three to one. So they yeah. did, uh, they did pretty well off of me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But still, it was I hard for him to say, I'm going to put that money away and not touch it because yeah. you know, you know, stuff now. Yeah. Where, and where we talk about, if we're talking just in terms of dollars, that's where it, it, it's too theoretical for a lot of young kids. But if you start talking about what is it that you want to buy with that money? Well, okay. If you can put that into savings and I double that, you can have in a month or two, you can have two of them or three. Of, yeah. What is the, do you have an idea of what the minimum would be for the time you'd want them to save? To, for it to well, be the thing that for, for my, my way of thinking is if, if they're thinking about buying something, if you can just get them to think about it for even a day or a couple of yeah, weeks, the age, yeah. they'll change their mind <laughs> and they'll, they'll go on to something else. Sure. So it, I think it's a matter of saying, let's, let's put, what is it that you want to buy? And let's, okay, let's make a goal that in a month or in two months or in three months, depending on the size of the goal, uh, if you still want it, then you can take that money out and, and buy it. Yeah, that's good. Any advice for uh, for college age kids about how to how to structure that? Because at that point they're starting to kind of move away. And you're trying to develop that sep You're trying to be supportive yet still yeah. develop that separation. You want you you, you don't want to lose them, but you know right. at some point you kind of have to fully push them out of the nest. And you're, you've gone yeah. through it. I I'm still going yeah. through it. Yeah, I I um, a lot of parents are, are a little worried that they they think you know I don't want to give advice. I don't want to step in and and ruin their, their independence. I can tell you from experience with a lot of the young people that I'm working with, they, that they really want that structure and help support still. It doesn't mean they want, you should, and probably should not, man, is there money for them? Yeah. But uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, my oldest son, who um, 22, almost 23, is uh, when he first moved away to college a few years ago, we would we, we agreed that on every Sunday, every Saturday morning at such and such time, I would be up early anyway. We were just going to call and 
talk and touch base about, okay, what, what expenses did you, did you have this, this mm -hmm. week? What expenses do you, bills do you have coming due this next month, this next week? How are you going to pay them? And um, just, just so that there's that structure. And again, the, the reporting creates accountability and um, like to think something's working. He just bought his first house uh, this, this spring and wow. renting out to, to three roommates. So oh. um, yeah, that, there, that was one thing that I, uh, you know, not everything was perfect, but that was <laughs> one thing I thought, I think he and I did right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is an interesting thing because some kids, obviously they, they understand it faster. Maybe they are more entrepreneurial. You have other kids who are not at all, who are more, you know, they're in, more interested in intellectual pursuits or whatever, not a right or wrong, but um, uh, one yeah, side definitely has more challenges, especially as you try to mesh reality with, uh, you know, with the, the world that they are more used to. Right. And uh, I don't know if there are any easy answers on that one because- No, I mean, every, every child is gonna be different. We, he, was, he was the one we thought we had to worry about most. Um, and you know they're, they're always your kids, and and so we, we still are, are are always going to be worried about them. But uh, it's 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 gratifying to see that uh, that, that they are are learning and growing. And and I'll, and I'll share one one more uh, last sure, activity that we did with these older two that we know we absolutely know helped. Starting about the time they were eight years old, and they're they were a blended family, so they were a month apart when we got married, almost like a couple of twins from the time they were five. But we sat them around the table and we pulled out Monopoly money and we said, okay, we're going to talk about something that's really important to the family, but it's got to stay, it stays in the family. And we took money and we counted out, here's how much money we make every month. And of course, after the first hundred dollar bill, they just like, oh, we're rich. But uh, you, you count out, here's what it is. And then you start talking about where does the money go every month? Yeah. Well, first of all, I don't even, we don't even see this portion because this goes right to taxes. And then this portion goes to our tithing and this goes to our, our giving. And then this goes to saving and, and investment. And we got you guys covered. We got your allowance here and here's our food and our housing. And, and we talk about, you know, in positive ways, that tax, whole tax thing, be careful because you don't want to, you want to raise kids who understand what taxes are for and don't, don't want to go off and fight the government. But <laughs> you say, look, we like roads. We like schools. We like this. Yeah. We like that. That's just part of, living yes, yes. in this country and uh and then at the end at the end this is the great thing at the end you've got a dot one dollar sitting out in, in the middle there for the whole month and they're like hmm <laughs> i guess i and from that point on we did we did it about three times about every year or two uh so much so that at the third time like we know we know we know but they never asked those older two kids never asked for money after that they mm. knew that when they had their allowance this was it. Else and we had plans for all the other yeah. dollars. Wow. And that, you, yeah, you were organized. It wasn't willy nilly. It wasn't just like, go. Oh, we right. just go until it's gone. And then we, right. we, we scrimp for the last five days. We didn't have any more money or yeah. whatever. No, they take comfort in knowing that, Hey, mom yeah. and dad have a plan. Yeah. They have a plan. Yeah. They, they're, they're, they're in charge. They're control in control of it. And, and so instead of asking for money, they might say, Hey, is there something we can do around the house to make some extra money? That's, that's where that came up for them. Yeah, we know that kids, even though sometimes they argue with control, they really, they thrive on structure and control and, yeah. and, and security too. So that's, uh, that's great. Yeah. So Hulk, you mentioned uh, tithing and giving. Do you have mm -hmm. any advice for how to, how to teach that to kids when they, you know, they're giving up something that they have and they, they you know, they want to spend on other things already? Right, right. I think involving them in things that they love or things that matter to them, mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, I live in Idaho and just in this, one of the least populated states, there's um, over 2000 nonprofits just in this state. Mm -hmm. So if there's, there's a chance wherever you live, you're going to be able to find a nonprofit that jives with something that that child loves. Um, and whether it's animals or other children or uh, pastimes and, and to talk about what that money could do most nonprofits will say, hey, if you give $10 or $25, this is what it would do for an individual or for the community. Um, I think making sure that they understand what it does and how other people have already done that and what we've received ourselves as a family. Um, a lot of families go through tough times and yeah. receive support and help from family and friends and neighbors and communities. Uh, I, I think helping them understand connect that way with, with their passions 
and with the family experience. Yeah. It will, will help them see that, hey, this is something that is just part of part of life, giving back. Yeah, I suppose if you if you go and you work in a food bank on the on the weekend with your mm. kids, and then you also give money to that food bank because you're supporting it, it creates kind of a real virtuous circle where you're they're yeah. more involved rather than they're just sending it to some yeah. highly advertised charity yeah. weekend TV. And oddly enough, I think that the as we give, we actually become better with the money that we have left. So mm-hmm. as, as if you gave ten percent. Most people are better with the remaining 90% than they are, would be with 100% because it, 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 it becomes much more of a thoughtful process with what are we going to do with the money? Am I just going to waste it, spend it on, on the wants or, hey, you know what? There's somebody around the corner who doesn't even have this and, and I'm thinking that this is a need. No, this is just a pair of shoes or this is just a new shirt or a coat or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, if you can teach those uh, those kind of lessons to your kids through the, through the money management exercise, that's that's really powerful. Rather than yeah. just it's you know making money for money's sake or money making money to have more money, right. uh, that's really valuable. Right. Well, this has really been very very good. I I've given a lot of thought to this over time, but I'm afraid I did not do a very good job of of managing it in any organized sense. And all, you've already really filled in a lot of things I wish I'd done, <laughs> but hopefully we can help some young, uh, young dads along the way. Uh, we, we try and make it easy. We've got a couple of free activities on our websites for, for teens and even for that second grade uh, based on a Berenstein Bears book. Uh, <laughs> they can watch a video and, and, um, and so there's, there's a lot of resources that not just we have, but there's, there's so many out there um, that are fun and, and, uh, and easy to, to do. Oh, that's which, which website is that on? Is that on that's the money? money fit moneyfit.org. Okay. Uh, if you go, we have an Academy on that site. There's a lot of free courses and, and what I would recommend anybody from about, if you've got kids from about middle school on, I've even had fifth and sixth graders take it, but about middle school on to early young adulthood. It's called My Life, My Choices. It's an award-winning program we put together a couple of years ago. It, it, it takes the, the, the individual, the child through their first theoretical uh, month away from, co- away from home, out college, one day at a time, one expense, one income, and, and a lot of kind of wacky, goofy things, but things that have happened either to me or a family member or a friend. And so it's, it's reality, but it's fun. And, uh, and they realize what is the consequence to my choices? It's it. yeah. These are some, some, some of the activities that we have. And this, this is a nonprofit, so it's really yes. out there to help, help people yes. in this situation. Absolutely. And your other, uh, your other website is 50 Plus on Fire for the, for the, the, uh, the older dads among us. Right, 50plusonfire.com. Yeah, okay, great. Well, Todd, it's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot for taking the time to talk with me today. Paul, it's been my pleasure. Thanks. Okay, Paul Bayes with greatdad.com. Todd Christensen, we'll see you next time. Bye.